Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the July 2021 sheet load of cards and I'm going to have quite a few tips along the way. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to create these. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared with you a look at the newest sheet load of cards showed you my first set and told you how you could download it for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. If after watching today's video you haven't downloaded this yet but you want to, I do have that debut video linked in the description box below for you to check out. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the process of creating those cards and this month even though the card itself isn't terribly hard to put together once you know what's going on, there are a lot of extra instructions that I have on the sheet so I wanted to go in depth with those and show you how to create the cards. Also today, my team of collaborators will be joining me in sharing their first sets. Some are here on YouTube, some share on their blogs, and some are over on Instagram. Make sure when you're done with my video today that you go see what they've created. I know that they would love you to stop by and leave them some love. Let's take a quick look at the supplies I'm going to use for my set today and then we'll get started. For my sentiment, I'm going to be cutting my circles with the second to largest circle die from this Spellbinder set. And I'm actually only going to cut six of those and I will be cutting these in half for the final 12 cards. I'm going to be using a few different sentiments from the Signature Greetings 2 from Paper Tray Ink. And I will be heat embossing that with some copper embossing powder. One of the alternatives that I have for this month's sketch is to punch a couple of holes in your top card that actually has the fold and thread some twine or string through it before you adhere it to the backer piece. So for mine, I'm going to just be using this DMC floss that I found that I tried to match as best as I could the pattern papers I chose. Speaking of pattern papers, I chose two pieces from Park Lane's Peaceful Pasture Pad. This is a Joanne brand, and if I can find it, I will have it linked in the description box below. I chose the floral with kind of the green leaves in the background, and then the one that just has the green leaves with some dots. I thought those two went well together. For my cardstock, I have nine different pieces. I have one piece of white for the sentiment. Now this would be a great opportunity for you to use any scraps you have because you just need to die cut approximately a three inch circle and have six total. So you don't have to use a brand new piece of cardstock. You can get out that scrap bin. For my bookbind fold cards or the card that goes on the top of the backer, I'm going to use white cardstock. So I got out four pieces of that. And then for my backer piece, I got out four pieces of Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus. As I start the process, I will be sure to let you know of any other products or tools that I add. But if I ever leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. So like most times, I'm going to get started with the cutting and I will be cutting my two pattern papers per the instructions. You will want to make sure at this point, if your paper has an orientation, that you keep that in mind when making your first cut. What I'll do is cut two strips that are wide enough for piece A, and I won't go over a whole lot of dimensions today since you have the printable, but I will show you the process. For piece B and the second two strips, I'm actually going to cut them at one inch wide first because it's much easier than later cutting them down to one inch wide. And I will actually be using the one inch mark to the left of my cut line, just makes it a little bit easier to get those two strips. 
then both of these or actually all four of these strips get turned around or turned 90 degrees and cut down to their final height of two and a quarter inches. Once I have 12 pieces cut from that first pattern paper, I grabbed the second and made those same exact cuts. Next, I brought in my four pieces of green asparagus cardstock for CS1, and each of these is going to get cut to six and a quarter by three and a quarter, and this will be the backer or the part that the folded card goes on. Now, the only thing I do not like about my cutter is that I do not have a six and a quarter or six and a half inch mark. So I actually cut two and a quarter off the left there. You'll see I use the mark to the left to get the correct width. Once those were all cut down to size, once again I rotated those and cut them to the final height needed, which for this was three and a quarter inches. I will be cutting another four pieces of cardstock into three pieces each, but this time I chose white for CS2. Now these are already the 11 inches wide they need to be, so I will just be cutting them into pieces that are two and a half inches tall. There are some special instructions on the printable how to fold and adhere these to be the cards on the front, but stay tuned and I'm actually going to show you different ways to get the same final result. For now, my last cuts are going to be with that last piece of white cardstock, which will end up being die cut later into six circles. I cut this down into four inch wide strips just so it would go through my die cut easier later on. All right, now I want to stop for just a minute and slow it down and start to talk about how to make the card that goes on top of that backer. You'll see here that this long piece is going to be folded in half, but there is a portion on the left that does not open up. That is actually adhered down to the back part of the card base. Now for mine, I used a scoring board to get those scores and folds. I'm going to show you on a couple different scoreboards what to do, and I'm going to give you an idea of what you can do if you don't have a scoring tool. For my first one, I'm going to show you how to do it on a score it board. This is a pretty old tool. Most of you probably don't have it, but in case you do, I wanted to show you on this. The first score line you'll make will be in the center so you can fold this card in half. Now this part isn't really that important because it's easy to fold this card stock in half, but I'm going to show you that way just so you can see how it's done. Now on the score it board, you center your piece up between the markings on the left and right. So we know that half of 11 is five and a half. So you center it between the five and a half inch marks on the ruler on the top. Once that is in place, you bring in your special tool. And I know some of you think this is a bone folder that I have um, chained to the tool, but this is actually a special tool that comes with it that has a groove up here that goes over this metal piece in the center. So once that's, you hold it down, this is rubber back here to help with that down. You put the tool in the groove and just pull down. And then you have your score line. Now this one, because it only has one place you can score, you can't go out to the one and a quarter inch mark that you have to score from the center line. You have to move this until you get to the one and a quarter inch. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see here my score line, I'm gonna move it over until it lines up with the one and a quarter inch mark on the ruler. And then I'm gonna make my second score. And then you'll see, you can fold this card in half and then later we'll be putting adhesive right here so that when you open it, only that top part comes up. This next tool that I'm gonna show you what to do might look a little bit more familiar to you. This is the We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard. So it cuts as well as allows you to score. So once you open this up and put those guards in place, you now have a 12 inch platform that you can score every eighth of an inch. 
Now, even if you don't have this specific kind, you might have a scoring board that is similar, like a Martha Stewart scoreboard, or I think Stampin' Up! makes one that has the whole 12 by 12 grid. But I just wanted to get this one out and show you another. What we'll do is take one of those same pieces. We're going to put it here so it just sits right up against that plastic guide and you can see that it's 11 inches long. So we're gonna use our score tool at five and a half and I just do this kind of gently but run it along there a couple times. And then you can either do the next one at six and three quarters or you can do it at four and one quarter. You just need to make sure that your score line is one and a quarter inch to the side of the center score that you made. Because I've already shown you a score to the left, I'm gonna show you a score to the right, so you'll move over one and a quarter inches. Make that score line. And now you'll still fold it in half, and you're like, wait, but I can't fold it back there. Just flip that over and then you can fold it back on that second score line, just like that. All right, this next way is for those of you who are saying, but Alicia, I don't have any scoring tool. So I want to show you how you can still make that same fold. So as the other two, you just fold this right in half. So you have your center. And then I'm going to open it up and it might be kind of hard to see, but there is a line there. And since this is actually going to be closed, I'm going to go ahead and mark that line with my pencil just so you can see that a little bit better. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our ruler one and a quarter inch right on that line and make a little tick mark, sorry, not one and a half. We're gonna put the one and a quarter inch mark on that line and then make a little tick mark at zero. And we're gonna do that on both ends, but here we'll have to put the zero on there and make a tick mark at one and a quarter. And then what you can do is connect those lines. This is all going to be, these pencil lines will all be adhered down in the card, so no need to worry. So you could, if you wanted to, get out a bone folder and help you kind of press along there. Or you can just go ahead and fold that back where that line is. So now it's folded in half and you have your line there. So you don't necessarily need a scoring tool either to get your results. Now what I'll do off camera is use my very first option and finish with the rest of these. All right, now I'm going to show you where to put your adhesive on your pieces once they are folded and scored. We do not want that little section at the corner to open up, so we will be putting adhesive between the two score lines. You will not want to put it anywhere else or your card will be glued shut. I'm just going to put two strips of adhesive right there between those two and then this gets folded in half and now you'll see that section on the left does not come up. While I work on gluing down the rest of these, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Because of today's process, I thought it would be fun to know, do you own a scoring tool? If yes, what kind? If no, what do you do if you ever have to score? Or maybe you've never scored anything before. Let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV so I know that you've answered it and would like me to see it. As for me, you have already seen the two scoring options that I own. The next step for me was to die cut my circles with that Spellbinders die. I did do this off camera, only cutting out five total, and here is why. So I did cut five circles with that die that I just showed you. It is approximately three inches wide, but right now I wanted to slow the video down a little bit again and talk to you about options if you don't own circle dies. 
So my first thought for you is to go around your home and try to find something that is about a three inch circle. Down here in my craft area, I found a couple different rolls of adhesive where the inside of the cardboard is about three inches. And then I also have a circle coaster. A subscriber made me these. Aren't they gorgeous? And this is bigger than three inches, but you know what? If it's all you have, use it as a template to make a circle. Another thing I just saw, this is the top of a mason jar, and if you don't have the insert in there, this is about three inches. You could trace around that. But what you'll want to do, just, you know, either get out your white cardstock if you're going to use full sheets, or scraps if you're going to use scraps, and you will just trace your circle on your cardstock. And then you can cut this out for your circle. Now, when you go to put this on your card, you will want to make sure it's face down in case you don't get all of the pencil lines cut off that won't show on your card. Now, while I'm cutting this, a couple other thoughts for you. If you are a scrapbooker and you have one of the like circle cutters where it cuts different size circles with a little blade, you could use that. I know that I have one somewhere here. Another option is to use a different shape. You do not have to use a half circle for these sentiments. You could use a square or a rectangle and maybe just round the one corner that's on the inside. And also my final thought is you could print out, like if you have a software on your computer where you could make a three inch circle, you could print that out on your printer, maybe on cardstock if possible, and make a template out of that. But there you see there, I have a three inch circle. No, the edges aren't perfect, but once you get this on the background or on that pattern paper, you're not even going to notice it. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw it here in my other pile of five. So now I have six total circles. Now, if you're a channel member, I have a special surprise for you. Over on the community tab, this afternoon, I'm gonna place a link to a cut file that actually cuts the shape already cut in half with the right edge cut off. So it has this circle and then two straight lines. So I give you some options so you can do that. I have cut files as well as a PDF printable if you wanted to print it and then just hand cut that. And now back to our regularly scheduled voiced over process. The next thing I did for my cards was cut down those six circles in half so I would have 12 pieces. Now because I know these circles are about three inches wide, I lined up the left and right edges on the one and a half inch marks on my trimmer. Since I do have a mark on the left and right, this was easy. Now you don't have to cut these perfectly in half. You'll just want them to be as close to the same size as possible for when you go to stamp them. Speaking of stamping, that is what I did next. Now I chose two sentiments that I'm gonna be stamping six times each, so that's why I brought in my Misty. I can just set each one up once and then stamp them six times. The greetings I chose for today are hey there and feeling so thankful for you. Now what I want to do on the circle is make sure when I set my stamps up that they're to the left of that half circle because as you see in the sketch, we're gonna cut a little bit off the right. I will be stamping with Versamark and then heat embossing with some copper detail embossing powder. The first stamp I set up says hey there, and you'll notice it is to the left of the circle. So once I have inked it up and used my embossing buddy on the little half circle, I pour on my powder, and because I have used the embossing buddy, the powder will only stick to my sentiment. Now I will be emptying my powder over my tidy tray, and just about every third stamp I had to empty the powder back into my container so that I could pour more powder on following sentiments. I sat these to the side while I stamped the first six, and then I brought in my heat tool to heat set those. And here's a look at the 12 finished sentiments.
I brought in my trimmer for a little more cutting and this time it is going to be cutting the right edges off of those circles. Now just to make it easier to be able to see what I'm cutting off, I did turn my trimmer around 180 degrees and that way I can use that plastic guide at the bottom to help hold my circle straight. I just kind of eyeballed what kind of margin I wanted to the right of each sentiment. You can see my cut line there and then I sliced that off. And now I have a 90 degree angle in the lower right hand corner. I continued cutting all of these in the same way and you'll notice that I did make an adjustment for the second sentiment to not cut off as much. I did actually leave one uncut because I wanted to show you an alternate way and here we go with adhering these down. You'll notice this one I did not cut any off and I am placing adhesive on the back. I'm going to line this up where I want it on piece A and you'll see some there hanging off and now I'm just going to hand cut that with some scissors. This is another way that you can do that if you don't want to cut your half circles down before. The rest of these though are all cut off so I will add adhesive to the back and place it on the lower right corner of piece A. Now after a couple of these, I decided to get a little bit smart, work smarter not harder, and I pulled in my MISTI because aligning these in the air was a little bit difficult. So I brought in my MISTI, placed adhesive on the back of one of my sentiments, and then I used that lower right hand corner of the MISTI to line these two pieces up together. And that worked so much nicer, so I did that for the rest of these. Now that all of the main pieces are ready, we can start to put these cards together. I did pair up the opposite patterns there. You'll see the one with the floral goes with just the leafy vines. And now I'm gonna add adhesive to the back of piece A, and then this will get centered in the area meant for it on the card front. You'll just want to do this as best as you can, trying to get an eighth of an inch border all the way around, including between the score line and the pattern paper piece. The same thing will happen for piece B it gets centered in the area to the left. I continued this same process until I had the 12 cards put together and ready to move on. This next part is completely optional. If you are not going to be putting thread in your cards, you can skip ahead, but I'm gonna show you now how I did that. I brought in a 1 8 inch hole punch and I used the score line as a guide and just tried to eyeball on each end the same depth or I went in the same amount with that hole punch. It's not perfect, but you know what? It doesn't have to be. So here's what that looks like. Another option is I brought in my We Are Memory Keepers Cropodile and I used this smaller circle and did the same thing. Now the advantage of this is you can see through the hole on the top and there are some little teeth on the side there to help with the depth into the piece, but I found that mine was a little too sticky and hard to get apart. So I did punch one like this, but then for the remaining ones, I brought back in the other 1 8 inch hole punch and I actually used the one of these cards as a template. So I put them on top of each other, got the little prong on my hole punch into the previous hole and then punched through. I did this until I had all of them punched with holes so I could move on to the threading. Speaking of threading, here we go. I cut off a section of floss that was 12 inches long and then I thread this through those holes on the card. I threaded from front to back on both sides and kind of turned it over and even the thread out and then I threaded each side back through. Now this was quite a chore here. I kept having to stop and wet my fingers and try to get that thread nice and skinny and flat to get through the hole and then finally when I was able to do that I turned it back over and I tied a little knot. It was a bit of a hassle but I really liked the way that it looked on the final card so I knew that I wanted to do this for the remaining ones. 
I cut 11 more pieces of floss just using the ruler to measure the first one and then that first piece as a guide for the rest and then I worked a little bit more on threading these. It did take me a few too many cards to realize the correct way I should have been doing these and that was with this darning needle. It is a needle with a large eye but it is pretty blunt on the end so I won't be drawing any blood. I threaded the needle with the floss and then I put it through the first hole making sure that I kept a little tail out and then I just used that needle to put it through the rest of the holes and it went so much quicker. So I would suggest to you to do this. Now you'll see I still did have a little bit of trouble with that knot but nothing compared to hand threading it and then having to knot it as well. On my original sample, you'll notice here that I did emboss the background piece, and that was really since I used the same cardstock for both pieces, it helped tell the difference between the two and add a little texture. For my cards today, since I'm using the green asparagus on the background, I am not going to do that, but that is always an option that you can do. To adhere my card to the base, you'll notice that I put adhesive around the four outside edges and then one strip to each side of the thread. This way, that part is really adhered down where the thread is so that it doesn't start to peel the card back from the base when you open it up later. I did share this in yesterday's video, but for my mini slim lines, I just use the cheap business envelopes that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I find that these fit the six and a quarter by three and a quarter inch mini slim line very well, and they're very affordable. I continued adhering the cards to the bases as I already showed you until all 12 of these were done. Now here's a little look at all of them together, but if you want a close up look, make sure to check out yesterday's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the July 2021 sheet load of cards and getting some tips along the way. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Also, if you have not yet downloaded this printable and you would like to do that, check out the debut video, which I have linked in the description box below. You'll want to make sure you watch the whole thing to find out how to download that file. Now, I would love for you to go visit all of my team of collaborators, their YouTube channels, blogs, and Instagram accounts are linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.